Actually, a very good doctor knows that when a person comes with unexplained dilatation of dilation of pupil with headache, it is aneurysm until proved otherwise. It should be considered this patient has what? Posterior communicating artery aneurysm until proved otherwise. otherwise you have to do immediately rapidly investigation and see if there is aneurysm maybe you need to do some surgery before this aneurysm rupture and subarachnoid hemorrhage occur and that is the condition which can uh, threat the life is that right so uh, the purpose of learning third nerve is that eventually you should be able to handle the clinical situation Right? So if a patient comes with unexplained, it doesn't matter some, uh, if uh, some patient has put a midriatic there, and then he comes and shows the pupil and you start doing MRI. Right? If there is unexplained dilation of the pupil, right? the most important and most common and one of the, one of the most dangerous causes uh, aneurysms. Right? So in this area, there was uncle herniation, then we brought one more condition, what was that? Aneurysm of? posterior communicating artery then there can be other conditions also in this area which is uh, full of CSF sometimes there is severe meningitis inflammation of meninges and in meningitis in subarachnoid space lot of inflammation occur right so that can also involve in meningitis can trap many nerves including third cranial nerve so there can be meningitis right which may be most commonly tuberculous meningitis because uh, tuberculous meningitis produces lot of adhesions and fibrotic process which may entrap multiple cranial nerves including the third cranial nerve but it can be pyogenic which is pus producing or it may be fungal then another thing which can damage here in the CSF right in this area that infiltration sub arachnoid okay I will write down sub arachnoid infiltration by malignancy infiltration by malignancy right that if a malignant cells some cancer spreads over here and those cells also trap multiple cranial nerves including the third cranial nerves is that clear here again I will stress there are compressive lions there are ischemic lions Compressive lions like uncle herniation, compressive lion like aneurysm, right? These are surgical emergencies. These are surgical emergencies of oculomotor nerve failure. But there can be medical emergency which are ischemic lions. As I explained in the previous lecture, is it those type of problems, ischemic lions as I told previously these are parasympathetic fibers and here are the core fibers what are these somatomotor fibers right parasympathetic fibers are outside right and somatomotor fibers are inside as I told you that uh, compressive lions will compress first parasympathetic and eventually lead to sympathetic so compressive lions usually produce initially internal of thermoplegia but ischemic lions Ischemic layer classically occur when there is microangiopathy, microvascular disease, and blood vessels which are supplying the nerve, uh, they fail to give enough blood supply to the these deeply deeply buried what somatomotor fibers. This type of problems can occur classically in diabetes mellitus, but it can also occur in hypertension. In uh, hypertension, in advanced cases, microangiopathy occur now in these cases the ischemia lead to the damage to which the fiber tomato motor and in this case uh, I will look down and out with the ptosis but without pupil dilation if this situation is there thank God this is not surgical emergency usually it is not dangerous things like uncle herniation not uncle uncle herniation or not aneurysm right usually in this case you need to manage the hypertension and diabetes and <coughs> and usually in this case usually within few weeks to months there is regeneration of the or recovery of the 
थर्ड नर्व पालसी सो यू कॉल इट मेडिकल कॉजेज ऑफ थर्ड नर्व पालसीज दीज टू एम आई क्लियर एनी क्वेश्चन अप टू दिस दे नो ओके नाउ वी नो द कॉजेज इन मिड ब्रेन वी नो कॉजेज इन द सबरेक्नाइड एरिया नाउ वी कम टू द कॉजेज इन कैबरनस साइनस राइट वॉट आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉजेज ऑफ थर्ड क्रीनियल नर्व डैमेज इन कैबरनस साइनस right don't tell me sinusitis my friend sinusitis is usually we are talking about frontal sinusitis basically sinusitis is the air space air filled spaces cavernous sinus inflammation is called cavernous sinus thrombosis they don't call it sinusitis so no one confuse them with the paranasal sinus inflammations yeah infection will travel infection will travel uh, from lips or nose or even from the some sinus infection but don't confuse i don't try to confuse me also okay thank you for your cooperation you have a tendency to confuse anyone around use this ability for young girls okay so we were talking about here was your cavernous sinus and in cavernous sinus we talked about that there was third nerve going you remember and it went into two deviants it came out then there was a uh, fourth nerve going right and then there was your friend what was this what is this ophthalmic and then this is maxillary and this divides into now what can happen in cavernous sinus right let me open the cavernous sinus and show you this is the right side cavernous sinus this is the medial wall of it here i have uh, removed it its posterior wall and i have also removed partially its lateral wall removed right just to show you what is inside the cavernous sinus actually inside the cavernous sinus here is internal carotid artery through a hole here internal carotid artery emerges inside the cavernous sinus from the floor of the cavernous sinus internal carotid artery enters and then within that it moves like that and then it emerges from the roof and there internal carotid artery will of course going to now and around it there is sympathetic plexus of uh, sympathetic fibers we'll talk that later when we talk about ciliary ganglion now here was a nerve which was going through the floor what was that how do you remember sex nerve goes like this? sexy nerve right it likes to have sex inside the cavernous sinus uh, and there it will find this internal carotid artery right both of them are inside but uh, in the lateral wall if i show you the lateral wall okay this is the lateral wall now here it is third and then there is fourth then there is fifth and then then there is right now what kind of what kind of problems can be in cavernous sinus one problem can be infection in the cavernous sinus right as he was telling that uh, uh, sometimes infection from the little area of nose or dangerous area of the nose or face right sometimes infection goes back right i, I will discuss that in some other lecture the how infection can travel back i think i have already discussed in the lecture which is video on the cavernous sinus right infection can go back and produce inflammation of the cavernous sinus and that will lead to uh, clotting of the blood here and we call it cavernous sinus thrombosis cavernous sinus thrombosis now this cavernous sinus thrombosis uh, at advanced stage it will, it will not only damage the multiple structures here and nerves which are passing through that it it here of course it can involve the third cranial nerve but it can also involve the other nerves like fourth or first part of the fifth or sixth so when you have third cranial nerve palsy with multiple other 
nerves which are passing through the cavernous sinus they are all together affected you should think of some pathology in the cavernous sinus one pathology is cavernous sinus thrombosis then another pathology can be that internal carotid artery balloons up inside right and if this balloon is there it's very angry looking balloon right this is called internal carotid artery aneurysm and this aneurysm can also compress the multiple nerves and it can include third nerve palsy along with some other uh, nerves palsies also so we can say first condition was cavernous sinus thrombosis second condition is internal carotid artery aneurysm within the cavernous sinus third is if unfortunately this ruptures if unfortunately it ruptures and lot of blood come out and cavernous sinus is usually a network of venous blood venous channels which are low pressure channels and when arterial blood come into that it become a high pressure arterio venous fistula form is that right and we call it keroto kerotico kerotico cavernous fistula and this can also uh, put uh, undue pressure on the cranial nerve passing in the through uh, uh, in relation with the what is this cavernous sinus and produce third cranial nerve palsy and other nerve palsies also so when you have multiple nerve palsies right especially third associated with fourth part of a fifth and sixth think of cavernous which which problem cavernous sinus pathology is that clear any question up to this so in cavernous sinus these are three important another thing there was a cavernous sinus on the media side what was it pituitary gland if you look from the front if you look from the front you will find this is cella tertica right and here is your friend sitting pituitary gland and these are your cavernous sinuses and in its wall there is third and fourth and fifth one and fifth two right third fourth nerve fifth one and fifth two right uh, sometimes there is a tumor here adenoma of pituitary gland and it may expand into this direction right and it may hurt multiple nerve especially third nerve right which is very near when it is trying to when it is entering into cavernous sinus very near to the uh, in the roof and near this adenoma pituitary adenoma so sometimes pituitary adenoma may compress the third nerve or sometimes pituitary adenoma tumor becomes so big that it undergoes ischemia and hemorrhage this is called pituitary apoplexy what is it called pituitary apo plexi but it's less common situation in which a very big pituitary adenoma uh, outgrows its own blood supply outgrows its own blood supply and then undergo hemorrhage and infarction right and uh, that may also hurt these nerves so these were some basic but very important concept related with third nerve damage so do you have any question again i will repeat when you are thinking of third nerve damage think of external of thalmoplegia and internal, internal of thalmoplegia if there is only internal of thalmoplegia think of compressive layers if there is only external of thalmoplegia think of ischemic, ischemic layers is that right but if there are both internal and external both of thalmoplegia then you have to think more wisely and intelligently for example if there is with that kind of usually when complete layer of third nerve is there these are traumatic or infarction lesions right then i now i will ask you a question if i have ipsilateral third nerve palsy with contralateral hemiplegia weber if i have ipsilateral third nerve palsy with contralateral hemi anesthesia with benedict and if i have ipsilateral third nerve palsy with ipsilateral hemiplegia uncle herniation is that right if i have blown out pupil only blown out pupil dilated pupil with headache think of aneurysm very good think of an posterior communicating artery aneurysm if you think of that there are let's suppose third four six multiple and uh, and trigeminal nerve first division especially ophthalmic division these are multiple involved what do you think lien is cavernous sinus i hope you really have learned a lot okay
class dismissed. Thank you.